David Moses Zerbe, also known as David Ito or Ricky Rodriguez, was born on January 25, 1975 in Tenerife, which is an island in the Canary Islands, off the coast of Morocco, to Karen Zerbe and his adopted father David Berg, although there was no official adoption. His parents were a part of a cult known as the Children of God. David Berg was the leader, so naturally Ricky became a part of the cult, where he went by his other name, David Ito. The couple soon released a book called The Story of David Ito in 1982. It had 762 pages and had at least a dozen images of Ricky unwillingly participating in sexual activity from within the cult. However, in the 1990s, the book was destroyed and eventually re-released with some changes. When Ricky became older, he grew to detest his parents due to them exposing him to sexual abuse at a young age. In September 2004, Ricky, now age 29, moved to Tucson, Arizona and went searching for his mother while working as an electrician. On January 7, 2005, Ricky filmed a video in his apartment in which he talks about his hatred for his mother and child molesters in general while showing the viewers all of his weapons. The main reason is that I want there to be some record of the way I feel, um, my ideas, just who I was, really. Uh, I've met, got to know um, some ex-members here and there some more than others, uh, but I wanted to explain some of the things that I've been doing and thinking and some of the frustrations that I've had, and anyway, I don't know, I just, I guess it's my, uh, sort of, my last grasp at, uh, immortality. I know that I'm not immortal, and I know that this video is not going to make me so. But, at the same time, I want to, um, I want people to know that even though um, some of the things that I'm going to try to do are rather shocking, and um, maybe not right in a lot of people's books, I want to explain some of the reasons behind them. So anyway, I'm just loading some of my mags here. Hope you guys don't mind if I do that while I talk. Originally, I thought that um, I was going to have this opportunity in March. It's uh, early January right now. And... Uh, I don't know, I guess I just got some bad information because all of a sudden, a couple days ago, I heard that um, the opportunity was going to arise in um, this weekend, which is basically, right now it's Friday night. So I was kind of caught off guard. I really wasn't prepared. So I'm sort of having to cram. It's funny. I always thought that, uh, you know, if I, I used to think a lot about suicide. It's, it actually, believe it or not, it should have started a long time ago. should have started when I was fucking born, actually. But to tell you the truth, it didn't really start in earnest until the infamous teen training happened. Yes, teen training. And, man, I started thinking, wow, how could I do it? I was, well, I wasn't the oldest. I was the oldest for a long time, but of course, at team training, there was uh, a bunch of girls there that were older than I was.
was, but, you know, <laughs> let me tell you, this, suicide is not something that you talked about with people, anybody, or, you know, or you were going to turn into a fucking meanie case, they beat the devil out of you, or whatever, it's just fucking insane, but y'all know that, that's old news, anyway, that was when I started thinking about suicide, I was thinking, well, you know, what kind of poisons are there? Poisons, you know, are easy, or so I thought. I've learned since then that if you want to take, <laughs> you want to take some poison and you want to make sure that it's good, or at least, you know, be reasonably sure it's going to work, it's good to take some uh, Dramamine beforehand to settle your stomach so you don't barf it up. Anyway, I didn't know that then. I thought about, you know, drinking chlorine, which of course is ridiculous. Um, I thought of, you know, like maybe... I heard of lead poisoning, you know, I thought, oh, maybe I could, like, um, you know, jab a pencil under my skin or something. It's stupid shit, you know, but I was just a little kid. Actually, what gave me that idea was Sarah, in, indirectly, of course, because she, uh, she used to um, scream and yell at my sister whenever she was, I, I think I actually might have told this fucking story. Anyway. She would, uh, I, I mean, my sister has such a fucked up time in team training. She's a fucking six-year-old, for God's sake. Fucking animals. I hate those fuckers. They're gonna fucking get it, too, if I have anything to do with it. Anyway, let's stay on the course here, Rick. Okay, so, I think I got 13 in here. The cool thing about the Republicans is their love of God. They just love their fucking guns. And now that the assault ban has expired, which I credit them for, we have high capacity magazines. Now I only have, this is my super cool Kydex sheath that I got from sidearmor.com. It's an in, I think they call it an in belt or in waistband holder. So it doesn't actually stick out it actually goes inside your belt and you pull your shirt over it. It's very cool. Anyway, when you're carrying a loaded gun, the Glocks is a very safe weapon, but there's no real safety on it except for a little um, button right on the trigger that has to be pressed for the gun to go off. So the idea of just sticking it in my pants with a clip or whatever just didn't really appeal to me. Because if you get into a fight or something, somebody, you know, I don't know, you know, stabs you with something or um, whatever. You're rolling around on the ground. You just don't want the fucking thing to go off. So this nice Kydex sheath, sheath worked very cool, I think. Anyway, I went with the Glock 23, 40 caliber. I thought of 9 millimeter. I think everybody does. The reason is that I didn't go with 9 is that there's the great debate always because the 9 millimeter people say that their guns are the greatest things since sliced fucking bread. Um, the ammo's cheap. They're effective. Also, this is especially good for people who like firing their guns a lot, like gangbangers maybe, <laughs> or or even police officers <laughs> who um, have to you know, fire their weapons in the line of duty, the 9mm is not nearly as loud as some of the bigger calibers, so you're going to have less hearing loss, which is cool. The only problem with 9s, and I was reading actually this one story that, that um, stood out to me, as we used to say in team training, anyway, about this cop. He was in a gunfight, and he was shot with a 9mm round, and he didn't even feel it until he... He didn't even realize he was fucking shot until the fight was over. So after that he said, I got rid of my 9, and he went with a 45. I went with a 40, because I think it's the best of both worlds. I just shot a 45 today for the first time. I was able to rent one at the range that I remember at. Um, that fucker was loud. He didn't kick nearly as much as I thought it was going to. Anyway, I like my 23. It's small, compact. Anyway, my high capacity magazines went from a 10 to now 13, so that's cool. I think I'm going a little, went a little overboard. I bought
bought a bunch of mags and all these fucking bullets. What with the police round? Golden Saber. It's a full load powder. They don't, uh, they don't skimp. Some people say that the hollow points don't expand as they should because ballistic gelatin that they use for their tests isn't really accurate. But, let me tell you, <laughs> you go through somebody's skull and that fucker's going to expand. So, that's what I'm counting on. I say I'm counting on that because I have a nice Glock and all this fucking ammo. But the truth is, this is my weapon of choice. The K-Bar knife. Served Marines for many, many years. I changed the angle on mine. I learned a lot about knife sharpening recently. Um, they, s they come with like a 30 degree angle because these fuckers are abused. They're beat on, abused for fucking everything. I only want it for one purpose, and that is taking out the scum, taking out the fucking trash. So I wanted a nicer edge, a finer edge that cuts better. So I changed it to basically a kitchen knife edge, which is 17 degrees. And now, goddamn, I can fucking shave with this fucker. So, one shot, one kill. Well, hopefully. Anyway, we'll see about that. Then I have some smaller knives and stuff, but anyway. Where was I? You know, I better check to make sure this fucking thing is actually recording. Just got a new camera here. Okay, we're back. Um, I just decided to move the camera a little closer because of the sound. I don't know if it was really picking up the best sound quality. So, anyway, duct tape. You can fix anything with this fucking stuff. Yeah, I want to fix some people with this. Anyway, okay, I'm sorry. I'm getting all off track here. Where the fuck was I? Suicide. Yes, suicide. Horrible. Horrible thing when adults contemplate suicide, but so much worse when you got a fucking little kid who is, you know, not born to be a messed up little fucker, but he's a little life, you know, she's a little life, and you just fuck him over because you're a sick fucking pervert, and you don't have anything better to do with your life than to fuck up your little kids. It's just so far beyond me, I just can't fucking imagine it. But yet it happened. It happened right before me. It happened to all of you. Thousands of us. Some worse than others. I had it good in many ways. I didn't get fucked in the ass. I was a guy, you know? A lot of you girls, crap. I can't even compare my stories with yours. But that's not what this is about. We're not sitting here comparing, oh, you got it worse than I did. You got it more times than I did. Because it's not about that. There's so many other kinds of abuse that went on that to some of us were just as bad. Some of us, to some of us, it wasn't. And some of us didn't have it that bad. So I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, yeah, I had it the worst. Or I didn't because it doesn't really matter. It should never have happened at all to anybody. That's the point. So, that's when I started contemplating suicide. And I've been fucking thinking about it ever since. Because, man, god damn it, after team training, shit. Just like all hell broke loose. It's just never the same. I got into martial arts a while ago. I'm still basically a beginner, you know, I mean, when you think of somebody who spends a lifetime, like maybe 30 years, like my um, teacher in Washington had, 30 years studying martial arts, and the guy's still learning every day. So, I study for, what, a year, two years? I'm just a fucking novice. But hey, it all helps. I thought it would help more, I guess, for me, but I think I'm just really fucked in the head. Uh, 
I've tried so many things trying to uh, trying to somehow fit in, somehow to find you know a normal life. Now everybody's gonna, everybody has said who I've talked to about this. Well, you know, yeah, yeah, everybody has their problems. Everybody has a fucked up life. But those people who say that, you know, they had no clue as to what actually went on because they weren't part of the cult. These are just average systemites that I talk to. Well, man, I'm so happy for them. <laughs> I'm so happy that, you know, yeah, sure they, you know, didn't have a perfect home. But, you know, and it's not, it wasn't like this to everybody, but there was a number of guys I, I talked to in Washington. Um, I sort of consider Washington my home because that's basically, you know, where I was the last, you know, four years or so, uh, ever since I left. So, now this is, this is interesting because um, I don't think most fam other family kids can relate to this because, yeah, they were abused, but one thing I don't think they were that much is secluded, and that really can fuck you over because if you don't have that um, mirror, if you will, of other kids your own age, um, even kids older than you, you know, older siblings, whatever, friends, then uh, it really fucks you up. And I was reading a, I was reading an article about how they were, how some people say, it's one of those conspiracy things. I, I can believe that it's possible. And... Who knows? Anyway, they were saying how they've been doing experiments on prisoners in the states, in the states for the last you know forty years or something um, about that, trying to see how they can break them and then translate those findings into the general populace, uh, modified of course. I don't know if it's true or not. It was interesting reading anyway. But that's what happened to me, not having that mirror not of other people to hold up and, you know, see how I relate to them, you know, those formative years, you know, if you're only around fucking perverts, people are fucked in the head and trying to fuck you over, wow, All right, I didn't even have fucking TV, for God's sake, uh, so, anyway. When I started martial arts, I I got into knives, and I thought knives were the coolest thing. I, I actually had experimented with, you know, trying to make, you know, new chakras. I guess every teen boy does. Of course, with me, you know, anybody saw, I was like, oh my god, you know, you're full of the devil. So I just sort of hide all my shit, and I was around the whole bodybuilding time. What a joke. Um, but anyway, I just got fascinated with knives, and I was thinking, because, you know, actually, when this started was, um, was believe it or not, back, uh, back during the Meanie series. Because I saw Meanie. Okay, now, we, as kids, we didn't always get along that well with Meanie because she was older. She was better at playing the game than we were. We were just little fuckers who were trying to have fun, and, and she um, set the bar so high because they really did grade on the curve that... Uh, it made it tough for us, but you know, none of us, none of us um, rejoiced when that happened to her. Nobody, nobody deserved that, especially not a kid that age. So, I watched every day new bruises on her, big fucking fat fucking bruises. And I started thinking to myself, holy fuck, you know? There's got to be a way. There's got to be a way how one person can stand up to a group of strong men. There's got to be some sort of equalizer. And I found that equalizer in edged weapons and training. But I never got a chance to learn until I left. And even then... 
I was I, I was into finding an art that was, you know, brutal, just about self defense. Just, you know, give me the worst, you know, most ugly technique possible and I wanna learn that, not because I'm that way as a human being, but I've seen how ugly humans can get when they wanna fuck people over, fuck little kids over. And when if ever I see that, if that ever happens to me, it's that whole mentality. Now I'm gonna get down to business and there's not gonna be anything left. That's what I was looking for. I didn't find it. I tried uh, karate for a while. I, you know, I, I always knew that I didn't have time. I, I guess that um, I was really trying to fit in. I really was. Uh, but something in the back of my mind, it always like, I always felt like the resources that I had just weren't adequate. And that no matter how much I did, how much I tried to replenish those resources, it just wasn't happening. So I was just using my own power without replenishing it. And eventually, it would be gone, which is kind of what I feel about right now. But anyway, getting back to that, I finally found this teacher, and he was really cool. Uh, he was sort of a new age guy, but man, that guy could fucking kick ass. He was he studied the Indonesian system, which was under the Penjak Salat umbrella, a very brutal, um, no, you know, fucking around system. So. I got two rounds left. Anyway, uh, so I always figured that, and I'd always think, still think about suicide, and I'd try to push it away, be successful for a while. It'd always come back, start coming back more frequently. Those thoughts, and uh, and I just, I just wanted it to end. That was my hope, and that was also my fear. That when I died, I would just want to flatline, nothing else, because I would not want to have to go through in another dimension what I'm going through here, and what I had been through. Now I'm not so sure about that. I don't really know what to think, but I think there's enough evidence, if you will, um, to at least um, to at least make one stop and consider that. You know, we may not believe in God. I don't. At least, certainly not the Christian fucked up God. He was a big fucking dick that he wants to stick up everybody's ass. But, but I don't know. I'm starting to think that life goes on, and that fucking scares me. That really does scare me more than anything. Because, because I, uh, I don't know. I, I don't want it to go on. I want it to just to be over. So anyway, I would think about suicide all the time, and then I figured that I'd probably cut my wrist since I like knives so much, you know. But uh, you know, everybody does the sympathy cut across the wrist, sometimes more than one. Bullshit. They say the best thing to do is to get a scalpel. It's incredibly sharp, small, and just dig in right there and try to go as far as you can. So I was thinking, well, that's pretty cool, you know. Maybe I'll. Uh, I'll, uh, you know, go rent a nice hotel, nice hotel, you know, maybe penthouse, um, run a nice fucking bath in the jacuzzi tub, um, spend a night with a nice, nice hooker, I just thought it'd be cool because I've never been with a hooker before, and, uh, anyway, I sort of like what Tom Likas says, you know. Uh, you're gonna pay for sex anyway, one way or another. <laughs> you might as well pay somebody who knows what the fuck they're doing. So anyway, that was sort of my dream. And at the end, you know, have some beers, get out my scalpel and a nice hot jacuzzi tub, just to end it. Would have enough time to bleed out. Before that, though, um, I wanted to just leave. I just wanted to take whatever money I'd saved up and just go somewhere cool, like Bali. And now Indonesia isn't the greatest place to be. I don't know about Bali. Um, I'm not so good on my Indonesian geography right now, but somewhere like that. Could be anywhere, really. 
It would have to be warm. It would have to have a nice sandy beach and lots of pretty girls. And, uh, and just, you know, go. Um, wait till the money runs out, you know? Just have fun. Just have a break. I've been going non-fucking-stop, like I'm sure everybody else has, um, since I, since I left that fucking cult. And, uh, man, that fishing, oh, Jesus fucking Christ, that was hard. That was fucking hell. That would be, like, one of my ideas of hell, is to be on that fucking fishing boat for eternity. God damn it, that was fucking nasty. Part of it was because it was my first job, you know, it was my first... My first real um, introduction to life on the outside was that, and uh, yeah, it was a jump start, let me tell you, but I got through it, I did really well, I got extremely good review, and good bonus, and it was cool, it was a good experience, but anyway, getting back to suicide, that's what I wanted to do, and then I would kill myself. And God, how I want to do that. How I want to follow that scenario. I just want to leave. It's been a few months. And then end it. But you know what? I feel that that would be the selfish thing to do. That would be the way, the quitter's way out. Because, yeah, I'm sort of quitting right now. But in a way, I'm not. Because I'm not doing it the way I want to do it. I'm trying to do something lasting. Something that if God forbid in the next life I does go on, um, that I can look back on this if I'm able to and and know that okay, maybe I didn't technically do the right thing, but I tried to do something to help. I didn't just fade away. I didn't just turn tail and run and let those fuckers win that I did what I could to make a difference. And I don't really know how far I'm going to get. I'm starting to think now that it's not going to be that far. And that's going to suck ass. I might not uh, get one person, that's for sure. My source for information. Um, the goal is to bring down those sick fuckers Mama and Peter. My own mother. What an evil little cunt. God damn. How can you do that to kids? How can you do that to kids and sleep at night? I don't fucking know. Anyway, that's my goal. But I'm one person. I'm working under situa uh, conditions that aren't that great right now because I'll only have a small window of opportunity to uh, get the information that I need out of this person. I'm not trained in torture methods, which is what I'm gonna have to make do. I got my drill here. The reason why it's got this fucking padding on it is just to try to silence it a bit because I'm in an apartment. Um, I got gags, fucking socks. <laughs> I got lots of fucking duct tape. Um, I got a soldering iron. Heat. It's rather crude implement. I think can work wonders, especially if it's used in the right way. But I'm not trained. I don't know how to fucking do this. I don't want to fucking do this. God damn it. Oh, you gotta see this. This is not for torture, but man, it could be. The Stun Master. 775,000 volts. You gotta hear this puppy. Wow. That's got to scare anybody. But, it's not going to be used for scaring. It's going to be used for temporarily incapacitating. It is a non-lethal weapon. Anyway. So, I don't want to turn around, you know? I want to... My goal is to get those sick fucks Ma and Peter, and, um, you know, then I can go to the next life knowing that, um... You know, that I made a difference. I'll still go. No matter what happens, I'll still go knowing that I tried. That I did the best that I could at the time. Given my experiences. Given, given my state of mind. Given that I was alone. 
given that um, I struggle with so many things that if you know if I had a clear if I had the warrior's mind like uh, Miyamoto Musashi wrote about in Musashi um, in the uh, the book of Five Rings, you know I probably would have gotten a lot further in this endeavor, you know. Just thinking of nothing, nothing but killing your opponent. Single-minded, no background noise in your mind, no internal chatter. Just getting down to business and doing it. But unfortunately, it hasn't been that easy for me. Anyway, anyway, I'll give it a shot. We'll see what happens. Uh, hopefully, if I don't make it. Hopefully somebody else will pick up the torch. Hopefully, in the end, whether they rot in jail and get boo food in the ass by whether somebody blows their fucking head off or slits their fucking throat, hopefully somebody will do something. Effectively. That will end their miserable fucking lives. But anyway... My main incentive in this is knowing that not only will it make me feel a whole fuck of a lot better, but that maybe it'll bring, well, if I'm successful, which is starting to look kind of slim, slim chance right now, but it's worth a shot, because if I am successful, I mean, I can just see... All those fucking thousands of family kids, you know, who've been abused. Okay, maybe there's not thousands. <laughs> you know, maybe some of the kids, especially the new generation, they, they don't know they're abused. They don't think they, I guess they certainly haven't been sexually abused. But you know what? That's not good enough. Because what about all of the thousands of us who have been fucked over, literally? Um, what about us? Where's our apology? They're not even fucking sorry. They're not even fucking sorry. But can you imagine? All of a sudden, to hear one day, guess what? Mom and Peter are fucking dead. Yeah. Somebody went into their house or their fucking motorhome or whatever. They poured gasoline on them. They lit a match. And we had a fucking barbecue. Wow. Can you imagine? I can imagine putting myself in this place, how it would make me feel if I heard that somebody did that. It would be like, wow, there is justice in this world. And an incredible weight would be lifted off my shoulders and I would be able to go on with my life. Yeah, I had a lot of fucking problems, but I got stuck on this one thing. I got stuck because there is this need that I have. This need, it's not a want, it's a fucking need. And I wish it wasn't, but it is. It's a need for revenge. It's a need for justice, because I can't go on like this. So, I can imagine how I would feel, how liberating it would be. And I hope that if I'm successful, I mean, I can't see how it wouldn't have this effect on people, you know? And anything you talk about the family would end up like, oh, but Jesus Christ, they got what they deserved. That's worth dying for. Even the thought even the attempt at bringing that about for people, that gift to give them is worth dying for. You bet it is. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try. I'm going to try my very best. Now, there is one problem, though, and that is that as I go on my merry way, I am not going to um, hurt or try to hurt any law enforcement. Now, that's going to be really tough to do this without doing that. Um, but that's where I draw the line. I'm not going to hurt them. I'm not going to try to hurt them. I respect law enforcement. Um, the justice system has let us down. However, those cops are out there putting their lives on the line for us. And I must say, um, yeah, there's some fucked up cops out there, but I'm thankful for them and I respect them. I got, um, I got to know an uh, INS agent. He's a really cool guy at my range. Um, it's where I went to get my uh, concealed weapons permit. And uh, I'm so glad I did that. Because even though I don't really carry my gun around, um, because my gun's for only one purpose, really, 
even though I have all these bullets. I guess it, I figured it's better to have them and not need them. Uh, but really, I only need one, and that's for myself. Um, so I don't carry my gun around, but I'm so glad that I went to that concealed weapons permit class because I learned so much. I learned about the law. Um, one cool thing I learned, and this is something that um, our instructor brought up out of the blue, was that here in our great state of Arizona, Jesus land, as some people call it, if you catch an adult sexually abusing a minor, if you catch him in the act, you can walk up to them and execute them, and it be a justifiable homicide, a legal shooting. You better damn well be able to prove that it was actually happening, <laughs> or you're going to be fucked. But the law still stands. It's legal. And that brings a smile to my face every time I fucking think about that. But you know what? My instructor said, that's too good for them. It's too good for them just to walk up and put a bullet in their head. This is a normal dude, you know? And ev I looked around, everybody in the class were vigorously shaking, you know, nodding their heads and saying, yeah, that's fucking right. You know, these are normal people. They're talking about walking up and blowing somebody's head off for doing it once. Well, what does that tell you? Maybe I'm not so weird after all. You know? Now, of course, you got to catch him in the act, and, well, you know, it's a little late for that for us. But the truth is, that's the way people think. That's the way people think about these sick, fucked up perverts. Just get them out of the way. That's why Boondock Saints, if you all have a chance to see that movie, it's excellent. I've watched that movie so many times. It's just. Yeah. You just get sick and fucking tired. Now, they weren't really executing um, child abusers. They were executing um, drug dealers, um, murderers, mafia, all that kind of shit. But anyway, you know, it's funny. People don't really seem to care that much when those kind of people start dropping like flies. It makes the world a safer place. But that's not why I'm doing it, to make the world safer. I'm doing it for justice, I'm doing it for myself, and I'm doing it for a lot of other people who would like to see these fuckers go down. <coughs> so, anyway, here I am. I've been lucky, though, I guess, in, in some ways. You know, came here. I was expecting to come here and have to pull sort of like a 47 running kind of thing. Where, you know, to avenge the death of their lord, they had to, you know, become um, vagrants and, you know, bums, basically, uh, for two years or whatever. So I guess I'm lucky I didn't have to wait that long. It just shows how stupid those fucking cultists are, you know? Even after all I wrote, even in the last thing that I wrote on Moving On, where I was trying to get some help with this, but you know what? I was kind of glad that I didn't get any help with this, even though I wanted it, because to me, I mean, I was as clear in that as I could be without actually spelling it out. And uh, I'm glad, you know, I'm glad that others of us haven't gotten to the point that I've gotten to where we really don't have anything to lose. You know, I'm happy because it. what it tells me is that you know, people still have hope that they're still going on. Um, this one guy called me the other day. He said that, and he he knew what I meant right off the bat from reading that. Um, he said that uh, we're dropping like flies. <laughs> well, I don't know if we're exactly dropping that fast, but um, yeah, people are going out. Um, I don't know. I think it's kind of easy to uh, just one night, you know, just one day, just decide to end it, just do it. But I think it's pretty fucking hard to do what I'm trying to do 
and uh, like plan to where I know that, you know, not really knowing when, but soon I'm going to have to go. I don't know. It's hard or not. It's a lot harder than I thought it would be. But, yeah, I don't really have anything to lose, I think. And, uh, I, uh, yeah, I don't want to go through my life um, the way it is now. I've tried for four years. Sure, it's not long. Feels like a fucking lifetime. It feels like a goddamn lifetime to me. And uh, every day, you know, if it had just gotten a little better, a little better, even emotionally, mentally for me, it would have been okay. It would have given me hope. But it's gotten worse. Every fucking day has been a little worse Kind of reminds me of that movie Office Space, where he's talking to the hypnotherapist, <laughs> and he says that I said, every day has been a little worse. <laughs> and the guy goes, "Oh, that's fucked up," and then he catches himself and he apologizes. But yeah, it's fucked up. It's really fucked up. Uh, but hey, it's life, and we're gonna play the hand that we're dealt. So. Like James Penn would say, it's time to get busy living or get busy dying. And, you know, James Penn got busy living. I guess I'm trying to get busy dying. But, you know, people die. They do. Every day. Every day. Uh, it's going to happen to everybody. You know, sometimes I wish that, you know, I'd get the Braveheart speech from somebody. But it's true, you know. I feel like we're in a war here. Um, it's not necessarily a literal war, like I'm making it, but it's a war nonetheless. I feel like every one of us who is left and in some way speaks out, in some way tries to help somebody, in some way tries to help ourselves, um, is a soldier in this war. It's a war on terror. Because these fuckers are the real terrorists. You know, Bush and Kerry get up there on their campaign platforms and they both talk about how they're going to hunt down Al-Qaeda terrorists and kill them. And kill them. That's what they said. Hunt them down and kill them. Well, you know, my question is, you know, what about these, you know, fucking perverts? You know, aren't they the real terrorists? Terrorizing little kids? driving them to suicide? Isn't that like murdering them, basically? You fuck with their mind so much that they can't go on, but it really can't go on. Isn't that like killing them? Fucking bastards. Anyway. It's a war on terror. It's like the military. You know, there's many different branches. There's special ops. So I'm starting to think that I'm sort of in, in this war. Um, there's the medics. I know some people who are medics. Um, the kind of people who are so cool to be around, um, who make you feel good uh, about yourself, encourage you. They have their own, God knows they have a lot of their own struggles, but they, they try to put those aside and help other people. Those are like the medics. There's the people in psyops, psychological warfare, I think. Um, there's the generals, people who are, are trying to coordinate this effort even now as we speak. You know, they're doing what they can to uh, put together um, new battles, new court cases, um, articles, trying to get people aware of what's happened, what's happening still in many ways. Um, yeah. So I think we're all part of it. I think we all have our part to play. Um, and, uh, yeah. I got in contact with my sister. Well, I consider her my sister because to me she is. She's not flesh and blood. But uh, I'm talking about uh, DeVita. 
everybody calls her Davida, but actually her name's pronounced Davida. Uh, I was with her in, in the Ukraine when she left, and she really felt forced to leave. Um, she could have gone back to the States, I guess. She had no money. The Crows wouldn't let her, you know, they, they took that back later and said that it wasn't true, but it was. I was there. You know, basically said she couldn't go to any other home in Europe. Our, the home we were in was basically falling apart. Um, she was fucking scared. But I admired her so much for her bravery because she just left in fucking Ukraine. She basically would have one meal a day, um, sometimes not even that. Her friends would feed her. Um, she was like, got into the being, you know, mafia bosses, girlfriends, and almost got herself killed. Um, had a fucking hard life, but she's still going on. She's, uh, she, yeah, she's um, dancing in New York. Um, anyway, she calls me sometimes, and we talk tells me the stuff she's going through. And it just breaks my heart, you know? Because I, I want to help her, but there's nothing I can do because it's all up here, you know? The damage has been done. I'm not saying she's crazy, but she has nightmares at night. I guess a lot of us do. I have nightmares. Not really about the same things, but about the cult. Um, she has nightmares about, you know, being dragged out of bed in the middle of the night to go have sex with uh, Berg. God damn. I can only imagine what my sister goes through. I was telling somebody today how uh, how different my sister, This Is Tetchy, um, became after after the Tetchy series. It's just so sad to watch that. To see her retreat into herself. And now Sue calls me today and tells me how great, you know, my sister's doing. That's been actually one of the hardest things lately for me is to have to, you know, pretend like I'm making peace with these fucking perverts. You know, I even just want to grab them and rip their throat out. And, you know, I gotta be nice. Started with Gabe and Amy. Man, they have so much blood on them. Hope somebody takes him out. Cause I don't think it's gonna be me. I, don't, I definitely don't think I'm gonna get that far. But somebody's gotta take him out. Those fuckers. Anyway, you gotta talk to them on the phone. You know, tell them all about myself. Try to be nice. Then, you know, Joy, Trust, Angela, Lusty, Trusty, whatever the fucking name is. She calls me. And, you know, I have to do the whole thing with her again. So, anyway. She tells me my sister's doing good. Yeah, right. I was talking to somebody else. We were talking about, because we sort of left around the same time, I guess. She was at my mom's place for longer than I was, though. Talking about my sister and how what a sad little thing she was back then. I can only imagine how bad it is now. Anyway, my mom's gonna pay for that. She's gonna pay dearly, one way or another. If I don't get to her, man, if I don't get to her and life goes on, I'm gonna keep hunting her in the next life, let me tell you. And I'm gonna keep going until somebody gets her, or I get her, justice will be done, believe me. It's only a matter of time. Somehow, some way, it's gonna happen. I'm gonna try to do my part. We'll see what happens and go from there. As my boss always says. We'll see what happens, Rick, and then we'll go from there. He's such a cool guy. He's like the best boss in the world, I think. And that's actually one of my main regrets here, having to do this, is to have to leave him, desert him, because I know he needs me. He has other guys working with him, thankfully, or it would make it so much harder for me to do this, but still. I wrote him a long note, tried to explain what little I could. What can you say, you know, what can you say? 
anyway. Yep. What can you do? Okay, well, I'm going to take a break now. Let me think of something else useful to say. Well, I got my Heineken. That helps a bit, I guess. Um, I'm bringing a six pack along for the road in my little cooler. Hopefully, before I actually have to go, I'll be able to, you know, make it a little more pleasant. I don't know, though. One of these fuckers to the head. I don't think there's going to be much time to feel anything. Might hurt for a split second, but certainly no more than cutting your wrist. Let's hope I don't fuck up and do something stupid and blow my nose off instead of my fucking head. But anyway, maybe fate will smile on me. The god of war, the god of revenge. Maybe they will grant me happy hunting. We shall see. But yeah, I mean, I guess I fucking said all I, I can say. And what can I say, you know? <clears throat> what can I fucking say? <clears throat> uh to have a peaceful, happy life. I tried. I did. Maybe I didn't try hard enough. I gave it what I could, you know. And I did. You know, should I beat myself up because I'm not as strong as other people? You know, should I berate myself because <laughs> I didn't have, uh, you know, mental stamina? It's funny. You know, there's... I mean, some of the Bible is actually pretty right on, you know. Stuff here and there, I mean, there's got to be something right, right? Um, sort of like a monkey, you know, typing on the typewriter for all eternity, you know. All eternity is bound to you know, write something interesting. Um, <coughs> yeah. But, uh... <coughs> Yeah, for out I was going to say, actually. Uh, oh, yeah. It's, um, it's that verse about, well, I try to forget all those fucking verses, but they still keep coming up every now and then. Luckily, they're not as clear as they used to be, and that always brings some comfort to me. But I'm thinking about the ones that, <clears throat> you know, about fainting in your mind. And, uh, and what's that verse about? Uh, a oh, wounded spirit who can bear, you know, that kind of thing. I've sort of fainted in my mind, you know, and I can keep going in the physical, you know, do good work, have a good job, you know, fairly nice apartment. But it's on the surface, you know, I've fainted in my mind and I, I can't get out of it, you know, I can't find the smelling salts. <coughs> to wake me up, you know, I, yeah, so, what am I supposed to do, you know, so, anyhow, I guess we'll see what happens, I hope that, uh, I hope, you know, y'all keep going, whoever watches this video, I hope that, um, I hope for one, it helps to understand a bit where I'm coming from. Um, but, you know, I sort of seem laid back right now, but Jesus Christ. You know, anger does not begin, does not begin to describe how I feel about these people and what they've done. You know, I mean, rage. I, I get livid, you know, just, that's a little closer to the way I feel. It's gonna feel good to do some damage, even if it's not much. It's 
far as I can go. That's what I'm gonna do. It's gonna feel so fucking good. Liberating. <clears throat> so. Anyway. What can I say? I guess I've said it all. So. Um. Yeah, well, I guess I'm going to go now. Uh, I wanted to see that movie White Noise just because I'm sort of interested in the afterlife. I know it's just a fucking movie, but it looks cool. So I like movies. I think it's because I was, wasn't allowed to watch that many. Yeah, sure, I watched some with Berg and all, but yeah. It's kind of cool to watch movies. So... Uh, I guess I'm going to go watch that one. Drink some beers. Be happy. What more could you want, right? Yeah. Well, I can think of a few things. I thought how cool it would be to... Uh, uh, to go hunting for some fucking child traffickers that are kidnapping little fucking kids um, down in Indonesia and some of those hard hit countries. I mean, can you imagine coming down there to steal little children and use them as sex slaves, use, them, use their organs, um, cut them up? Can you imagine fucking doing that? I mean, in a way, that's what these fuckers have done to us. They don't, didn't actually, you know, grab a knife and cut us up, but man sure fucked up our brains used us as slaves because that's what we were every last fucking one of us no matter how we were treated we were fucking slaves just there for those sick fuckers pleasure that's all it was that's the way it was at grandpa and mama's house alright okay well keep the Keep fighting, keep the faith, and all that other stuff. And someday, in some way, some of us are going to be around to see those fuckers burn. Literally or figuratively, they're going down. So, with that happy thought, I shall leave. After making the tape, Ricky messed up with Angela Smith, a former associate of his mother and who had also participated in sexually abusing him. He stabbed her to death in her apartment and then drove to Bleat, California, where he committed suicide by a gunshot wound to the head. He was 29 years old.